newcomer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us to come to Duke University to discuss our collaboration. And uh, actually, we had several good meetings uh, in uh, Duke Kushan and also here at, uh, in Doha. And uh, we look forward to having further collaboration with you. And uh, on behalf of the delegation from Vietnam, we have uh, Dr. Phạm Văn Tát, Head uh, Department of Manpower of Vietnam Ministry of Health. Dr. Phạm Văn Tát. We have Dr. Đặng Văn Chính, Chief Inspector of Ministry of Health. Yeah. We have Ms. Nguyễn Quyết Ngọc from the Department of Finance and Planning. And uh, Professor Ha and I myself and Bích from Hanoi University of Public Health. And uh, I am uh, talking a little bit about Vietnam and then talk about public health issues in Vietnam, including achievement and challenges. And uh, you know that Vietnam is located in Southeast Asia, and the country covers 331 uh, square kilometers. And uh, we have 63 provinces, and the total population in 2016 is 92 million and 70% uh, of people living in rural areas. And uh, in terms of economy, and uh, in 2016, and GDP per capita in Vietnam is more than 2,000 US dollars. And uh, you can see here, this is the organization of healthcare system in Vietnam. You can see the healthcare organization in Vietnam has four levels. At national level, we have Ministry of Health, we have different national uh, institution and medical university and the second level is provincial level uh, we have 63 provinces and we have provincial health department we have provincial uh, hospital we have preventive medicine center and also medical colleges belong to the province and uh, the next level is a district level and now we have more than 700 districts in vietnam and at district level, we have district hospital and district health center. And uh, at the bottom, we have more than 11,000 communes. And each commune, we have one commune health center. So this is a public health care system. Apart from that, we have private system with uh, almost 200 hospitals and more than 2,000 beds in, in, in Vietnam. This is a, an overview of uh, healthcare organization. And now I am talking about main achievement in terms of public health. And uh, if you have not been to Vietnam, you can see Vietnam is very beautiful and peaceful. And you can see a lot of nice pictures. And then you can see in Vietnam, in terms of economy, you can see GDP per capita has increased over time. And <coughs> GDP per capita is more than 2,000. And in terms of education, and 93% uh, population can read and write. It's quite high. And uh, in terms of uh, a sanitation facility, and up to now 70% of population have access to improved sanitation facility. And as a result of the development in terms of economy and social economic status, you can see here how outcome in Vietnam have also improved over time. You can see life expectancy in Vietnam now is more than uh, 75 years in Vietnam and increase over time. And in terms of uh, maternal mortality, you can see decline trend over time. Now it's about 54 per 100,000 100, live births. And infant mortality also going down. Now it's about 17 per 1,000 live births. And this is under nutrition. And you can also see the decline chair. Now it's 14% yeah, uh, children under five years old and have uh, nutrition, uh, under nutrition. And this, uh, this is the immunization topic in Vietnam. In Vietnam, immunization is one very important public health intervention. So you can see the risk of health uh, immunization is always more than 90%. And we conducted one study, we found out that about 6 million diseases 
Disease and about 20,000 deaths have been prevented because of immunization program. This is a big achievement in Vietnam. And this is the healthcare services, access. And this is antenatal care and childbirth. And then this is, you can see more than 90% uh, both uh, have skin attendance. And also more than almost 74% and uh, the uh, pregnant women had four times uh, contact with healthcare provider. And this is the access to other treatment like the tuberculosis treatment. And uh, now about 80% of TB patients have access to treatment. <coughs> and also HIV AIDS, 80% of HIV AIDS patients have access to ARV treatment. And also health financing, at the moment, we spend about 7% of GDP on health. It's quite high as compared to other countries in, in uh, Southeast Asia. And then this is the healthcare expenditure per capita, now 140 US dollars per person per year. Nothing compared to the US. <laughs> you spend more than 10,000 <laughs> Per person per year, so yeah, but you can see the increasing trend is also good. And uh, health insurance service nowadays, and 82 percent of population in Vietnam have health insurance. That's why good. You can see yeah, the increasing trend over time. That's why good. Yeah. And this is a health human resources. Now we have about eight doctors for ten thousand population. And we plan to have about 10 doctors per 10,000 population in 2020. <coughs> and this, you can see here, main health indicator in Vietnam. We already achieved or almost achieved the target set by Ministry of Health or MDG. You can see, if you compare the result we achieved in 2015 and the target set by Ministry of Health, you can see we already achieve or almost achieve the target. And uh, that's why, and UNDP uh, concluded that Vietnam already achieved four MDG, and now we are moving to sustainable development goals. So that is main achievement of public health in Vietnam. <coughs> now I am talking about key challenges. We are now facing many challenges. You can see here the picture, quite common in Vietnam overcrowding, degradation of environment, and unhealthy lifestyle, <laughs> smoking, drinking. And now we are undergoing epidemiological transition where the burden, caused, burden of disease caused by non-communicable diseases are increasing and uh, made up more than 70% of cases, of uh, admit, uh, hospital cases. And this is the number of deaths due to NCD. You can see the increase by 20% from 2012 to 2014, and uh, from more than 400,000 deaths, now more than 500,000 deaths because of non communicable diseases. And this is a main NCD in Vietnam. Hypertension is quite common, and the prevalence is about 90% among people is 18 to 69 years old. And a prevalence of diabetes is about 4%, now it's more than 5%. And COPD is about 4.5%. And we have more than 125,000 new cases of cancer per year. That is increased a lot. And this is a prevalence of risk factors for non communicable disease. You can see here, smoking prevalence among men in Vietnam is very high. It's uh, now 45%. And harmful drinking, and you can see increase a lot, 44% of adults yeah, consume drinking at harmful level. And overweight is now increasing also 50% of population have a BMI more than 25. <coughs> And physical activity, and uh, nowadays people tend to be more physical, uh, physically inactive, and 30% uh, of them have 
not enough physical activity. And uh, you can see here, for example, you can see 30% of people with diabetes uh, diagnosed within the health system. So that you can see about 70% are not aware of their diabetes problem. And only 30% of people with diabetes have uh, treatment, I mean, managed by uh, healthcare system. And the same for hypertension. Only 43% <coughs> of people with hypertension detected within health system. There are a lot of cases of hypertension who are not aware of hypertension status or not managed by healthcare system. And uh, we are also facing aging uh, problem. At the moment, we have more than 10% of the population is 60 years old and over. And in the future, we are facing aging problem and many uh, aging problem related to non-communicable diseases. And now, why we are facing a problem of non-communicable diseases? The healthcare system have not well prepared for that. Uh, we conducted some study, we found out that the capacity of healthcare system in Vietnam, especially primary healthcare system, district level and common level, is still not adequate to serve NCD-related services in Vietnam. Uh, that is a big, big challenge in Vietnam, now raising uh, non-communicable diseases. And uh, this is an uh, overcrowding of central hospital because a lot of people have NCD, but the services for NCD are uh, not available at grassroots level. So people have to go to higher level to get services. So you can see a lot of people are waiting for their turn in national hospital. This is our Minister of Health who visited cancer hospital to give direction to show the overcrowding of hospital. Okay, we not just face problem of non-communicable disease, but also we are facing re emerging communicable diseases. Especially in 2014, we have measles outbreak. There are more than 20,000 cases occurred in 2014. And recently, we have the problem of dengue fever outbreak, and uh, we have more than 90,000 cases during January and August 2017. It's quite a lot, many, uh, many cases, and uh, you can see it also causes overloading of uh, hospital. And you can see one uh, patient bed can have uh, three or four patients. Yeah, now we are facing inequity in health, and uh, I already mentioned Vietnam already achieved or almost achieved the MDG uh, uh, target, but the project is not the same. <coughs> when we compare different group of population. For example here, for example, infant mortality, you can see here the <coughs> overall uh, rate is uh, about 16 per 1,000 live births. But if we compare different group of population, you compare King is a majority uh, group in Vietnam, and ethnic minority, you can see the big gap between the, the, the two groups. And also, in terms of economy, compare rich group and poor rich group, you also see big gap. And also, in terms of education, people with non-education have very high infant mortality ratio as compared to higher education. And urban rural, you can see also the gap here, yeah. urban, urban and rural. And you can see the pattern of inequity in health in, in Vietnam. And similarly, we have under five mortality, we also see the difference between different groups, yeah. minority and uh, majority, rich and poor and by education, rural urban population. And the same for under nutrition, and also comparing different groups, we see the gaps, the big gaps. The same for access to services, yeah. yeah. This is a number of doctor per 10, uh, thousand population in Vietnam, and you can see here we already uh, almost achieved. Uh, now we have uh, eight doctor for ten thousand population. You can see the big gap between the region. For example, uh, Mekong uh, River Delta, we have about uh, five point six doctor for ten thousand population, as compared to 
Hà Nội City, uh, Red River Delta, where we have Hà Nội Capital, it's almost 10, doctor per 10 thousand population. And also number of bed, you can see also the gap uh, between region, so that uh, you can see the inequity pattern. Now in Vietnam, we are talking a lot about PHC, universal health care, we got see the three dimensions and population cavities, service cavities, and also financial protection. In terms of population cavities, you can see in Vietnam, more than 80%, 82% of population in Vietnam health insurance, have health insurance. That means they have access to basic health care services. Uh, in terms of service cavities, and this is based on WHO method, and we calculated uh, the indicator SVZ381, we compare Vietnam with other uh, country in the region, and we are better than the other country, but lower than uh, Thailand. And the maximum uh, index is 100, but uh, we achieve uh, 68. It's quite good as compared to the other. But in terms of financial protection of post COVID, we are still facing a problem. You can see here. Out of public health expenditure in Vietnam, of total healthcare expenditure, always made up more than, in the red one, more, more than uh, 50%. And according to WHO, if out of public health expenditure better than 30%, we are very difficult to achieve the universal health coverage. So that you can see in Vietnam, always made up more than uh, 50%. And, uh, High rate of out of pocket health expenditure can cause two problems catastrophic expenditure or impoverishment. And uh, catastrophic expenditure is defined as the out of pocket health expenditure equal or greater than 40% of capacity to pay a household. And uh, impoverishment happens when uh, a household has living standard, higher poverty line, but after paying for health care services, it becomes a uh, poor household. And you can see this figure in Vietnam, and even decreasing over time, but in 2014, 2.3% of households in Vietnam face catastrophic expenditure, and 1.7% of Vietnamese households were impoverished because of healthcare expenditure. And in terms of absolute number, you can see here, and more than 500,000, 500, 50,000 households in Vietnam face catastrophic expenditure and more than 400,000 households in Vietnam were impoverished because of healthcare expenditure. That is a big problem nowadays in Vietnam. We have to solve because of high out of pocket health expenditure. And if we compare a different group of population, you can see if household has health insurance, the catastrophic expenditure rate is lower. <coughs> And then rural have higher catastrophic expenditure, and the border have a higher rate of catastrophic expenditure. The same for impoverishment. And uh, if uh, the household has a health insurance, then the rate of impoverishment is lower, and uh, rural areas have higher impoverishment, and also poorer people have higher rate of impoverishment. And uh, the other issue including nowadays, even 82% of population in Vietnam have health insurance, but we have some difficult group like the uh, informal sector worker. Uh, now the COVID among uh, this group is less than 20%, only less than 20% of them have health insurance. So when they have health problems, they pay a lot of out of pocket. And uh, at the moment, we still use fee for service as a main provider payment system. So that this mechanism Encourage doctor, physician in hospital to prescribe more services than needed, and how increasing uh, out of pocket health expenditure. And also, we have shortage of health human resources, especially in disadvantaged area, in mountainous area. We don't have doctor, we don't have enough uh, health staff to work there. So that is the main challenge we are facing now. In summary, now we are facing main. We are now having main five problems, rising burden of NCD, re-emerging communicable diseases, aging related problems, universal health coverage, health inequality, inequity, 
and capacity of health system, especially grassroots level of healthcare. Why we uh, having heavy burden of non-communicable diseases, capacity of healthcare system, especially grassroots level, is still very weak. So we don't have services for NCD uh, patients. So not only NCD patients have to go higher level to get treatment. So that uh, main uh, problem we are facing now in Vietnam. And uh, we already have some study uh, together, research project with Duke, and uh, we have been conducting two projects. One is capacity of primary healthcare, uh, uh, <coughs> healthcare system for cardiovascular medicine <coughs> and control, and we call phase study. And the second, we uh, address the issue of community health worker in Vietnam in terms of management and prevention of uh, NCD, and we call both study now we have been working <coughs> together to uh, to uh, uh, completing this uh, study, and uh, I hope that in the future we will have more uh, opportunity to work together. And when we find some common interest, we can discuss to to develop some research project together. Thank you very much for the. Uh, <laughs> so we uh, yes. Many people from our team can answer your questions, so feel free to post your question. <coughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. I was very curious. You said that you had uh, increasing coverage of immunization in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but then what was the cause for the missiles outbreak? Ah, okay. Yeah, was there question. something that happened? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just curious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good question, and uh, people forget to bring their child to have measles uh, 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 vaccination and also cost infection in, in hospital when there are a lot of patients in the hospital they have uh, with uh, cost infection so that is two main reasons yeah, the, the, the main reason is uh, people forget to bring their child to have <coughs> immunization that is a uh, yeah not, not only for yeah, not yeah. even only the problem <coughs> but there are some cases uh, uh, like the vaccination, a child will be denied after vaccination at the side of mm -hmm. So uh, if the rumor created in the community, uh -huh. people uh, say okay. that uh, because of uh, vaccination, you know, people, uh, <coughs> the child will kill, so um, it's a very bad effect. So then um, parents uh, say that maybe mm -hmm. to um, do the vaccination. So, mentioned how there is an increased burden on the elderly too. Uh, do you think that might be because of uh, westernization as well? Maybe as families are less likely to take care of their elderly? Or is there another reason? Uh, the main problem associated with aging population in non-communicable diseases mm. and the prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, and more prevalence of elderly people. Mm. So thank, thank you very yeah. much for that very uh, uh, illuminating presentation. So you were talking toward the end about some of the challenges in achieving universal health mm -hmm. coverage uh, and mentioned that there's uneven uh, insurance availability, yeah. uh, the ways in which providers are being reimbursed mm -hmm. creates some mm -hmm. uh, misalignment. So what kind of policy reforms would make it easier to mm -hmm. have universal Health, health yeah, yeah. At the moment, we're trying to increase the coverage among informal sector worker, and uh, we call also near poor people. Now, they in Vietnam, all poor people are subsidized by government, 
and the the I mean the health insurance is already covered by the government subsidy, but the near poor, uh, we already provide up to uh, eighty percent of premium. Premium in Vietnam is quite low; it's about thirty five US dollar per person per year. But uh, informal sector workers they still don't buy, and because they said that they they think they are um, well very healthy, and also <laughs> they don't have enough money to buy health insurance. But uh, some projects they provide the support up to 90%, up to 95%. And now we uh, try to reach uh, people by uh, health insurance as a family health insurance. So cover own uh, family member. So that is one. The second uh, question about the tend to increase the out of pocket health expenditure. And I mentioned in Vietnam now they use the fee for service as the uh, main provider payment uh, uh, mechanism. Now we apply two other things on the capitation, apply at grassroots level, and so they can the uh, DIG and in higher level. But uh, we are still piloting. Yeah, but we are successful. Then we move to, I mean, more advanced provider payment system, not fee for service. Thank you for this presentation. I um, am curious when you talk about the shortage of healthcare workers, what kinds of healthcare workers are employed, particularly in the, the district, not the district, but the mm. community, the commune mm -hmm. level um, healthcare yeah. facilities? Mm. Are those doctors or maybe healthcare workers, nurses? Who's, who's working there? Okay, I think uh, <laughs> Dr. Park, uh, the head of the Department of Ministry of Health, can answer. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I missed my, my little, uh, uh, a little, yeah, my, my friend. Can, uh, it is better yeah. than my Vietnamese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, hiện nay thì uh, ở Việt Nam thì cái trạm y tế là bác sĩ ở xã thì uh, cái số lượng thì bây giờ quan điểm chỉ cần có bác sĩ làm việc ở xã là được như vậy thì uh, nói chung cứ một tuần có hai hoặc ba buổi bác sĩ ở trên tuyến trên từ huyện sẽ xuống xã để khám cho người bệnh thế còn cũng có xã thì hỏi uh, sẽ có bác sĩ tại chỗ thì hỏi cũng khám bảo hiểm mà cũng cũng uh, tự nó chi trả nhưng mà hiện nay nhà nước vẫn chi trả cho cái số bác sĩ này bác sĩ và điều dưỡng thành một cái group làm việc. Uh, in Việt Nam, in uh, we have uh, some hundreds of uh, community health centers uh, and uh, there are some uh, proportion of them having uh, doctors working at the community health centers. However, others don't have uh, doctors. So um, we have uh, doctors from the district health center who come from district to the common health center two or three days per week so that the uh, people living in this commune can have uh, access to the doctors. Uh, and other people working at the common health center including nurses and uh, doctor assistants. Assist. Oh, interesting. I, yeah, it's good. <laughs> How are the doctor's assistants prepared with their education? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital. Tư vấn một số những vấn đề thôi. Là nếu khó là phải chuyển bác sĩ. Doctor assistant they provide with equip with some skill to diagnose the diseases. However, their skill and their professional skill is not as good as the professional doctors. So they just have assigned to diagnose some basic diseases and other complex. Còn bây giờ cũng chỉ còn ở chỗ với một số cái tỉnh khó khăn thôi. Nhưng mà cái tới đây sẽ là giải pháp mà Việt Nam sẽ không có nữa. Yeah. 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 Ye
mà sẽ dùng đào tạo bác sĩ giỏi ở tuyến tuyến trên ấy, xuống hỏi trực tiếp bạn ạ. Em là doctor assistant exist in some remote area like in the mountainous area. But now we stop the training for doctor assistant and to get solution to doctor from the district health center to go to the health center to Thế cái chiến lược mới nhất của chính phủ Việt Nam là muốn kéo cái khả năng tiếp cận dịch vụ của những người dân ở vùng sâu vùng xa để cố gắng cân bằng cái lực lượng này. We are trying to have the health equity at the remote area so that the people living in the mountainous area, for example, can have access to the health care like somehow equivalent to people living in the rural, not mountainous area. Yeah, I just want to add that in Vietnam we have more than eleven thousand common in Vietnam, but up to now we have about eighty-seven percent of them have doctor. Yeah, so the. The common health station without a doctor located in the mountain earth area. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you again so much. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in the overcrowding mm -hmm. um, situation mm -hmm. and uh, your comments as to how it's affecting the these five challenges mm -hmm. or some of them and what. Are, are there things that are being done about it? Because I know it's mm -hmm. not just, it's not just in Vietnam, it's mm -hmm. also the, the, the arriving issue organization and in multiple places. So mm -hmm. what is um, yes. Vietnam's, you know, yeah. Ministry of Health, yes. uh, I know how to tackle that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned that, uh, a lot of people in Vietnam now have been uh, non-communicated with diseases. Yeah. They have to go higher level to get uh, treatment and services. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Vietnam uh, Ministry of Health now have a very big uh, project on strengthening the capacity of uh, family health care system in order to deal with the uh, non communicable disease and also for the other type of uh, new challenges. So now that we are very much focused on family health care in Vietnam, we uh, already have some uh, program to train family doctors and uh, to work at the uh, community level, also at the social level. To avoid the overcrowding in the high level. Well, oh, and then overcrowding in the cities and at the hospital. Oh, overcrowding in the cities. So with urbanization and mm. the cities becoming. Uh -huh. I saw the picture with all the motorcycles. Uh -huh. I was wondering from an urban uh -huh. planning, uh -huh. environmental point of view, okay. how is that affecting other uh -huh. challenges and what's being done or mm -hmm. what might be done in the mm -hmm. future? Yeah, I think that is also a challenge in Vietnam. And uh, you can see the uh, urbanization linked to uh, overcrowding uh, hospital. Uh, but, yeah, but uh, if uh, most of people, uh, who many people who work in city, they are from other provinces. Mm -hmm. So if they have food and in grassroots level have a system, yeah, then we can use that. Uh, we can uh, solve the problem. <coughs> I can uh, add mm -hmm. something more that uh, you mentioned about the overcrowding and environment factor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, um, in Vietnam, we have few cities called mega cities, like Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, where population over 10 million. And um, we have a big problem with the uh, traffic jam, mm -hmm. with the, um, mm -hmm. because the capacity is not uh, enough. Mm -hmm. With the view for quite long ago, about one or two million people, and now it become ten million. So yeah. capacity is not sufficient, and um, also in the environment factor, uh, water uh, yeah. pollution, uh, air, uh, air pollution, yeah. water pollution is a lot of problem. And the main uh, problem we are facing in city when we don't have very comprehensive. Uh, So transport the uh, transport and um, factor because traffic jam people uh, spend um, maybe some up to two hundred 
can comment later, but uh, at the moment we have several projects. The big project supported by One Bank, by ADB, by WHO. They are working very closely with Ministry of Health in developing some intervention uh, at the moment, especially focusing on grassroots level of healthcare. Yeah. So I think uh, not just international organizations, but we should learn a lesson from other countries like China and uh, Thailand in order to show a public health program in Vietnam. We learn a lot from uh, Thailand healthcare system. Not just international organization. Thank you uh, very much for your question. Uh, tôi thì cho rằng uh, vai trò của cái cấp tổ chức quốc tế thì là rất là lớn ở Việt Nam. Uh, đứng đầu là nếu mà về sức khỏe đứng đầu là về tổ chức thế giới. Cái thứ hai là chính phủ Việt Nam có chủ trương là đưa một Liên Hợp Quốc. Tức là tất cả các nhân tổ quốc tế là Liên Hợp Quốc ấy, thì, uh, thì uh, 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 tập trung lại thành một cái đội ngũ thống nhất và nó mạnh hơn trong đó thì sức khỏe thì vẫn là ưu tiên của thế giới vẫn là quan trọng nhất toàn bộ những vấn đề về sức khỏe của người dân Việt Nam thì tổ chức thế giới tại Việt Nam đều biết và đặc biệt những có những cái dịch mà quan trọng mà trên thế giới này đều tiếp sợ ví dụ như sát sát là kinh khủng luôn thì chính là ưu tiên của Việt Nam đã đạt được thành công như này và cả thế giới cũng thoát được cái nạn đó cái thứ hai nữa là, là các cái nước sông phương trong đó có cả có cả Mỹ và nhiều nước khác nữa thì cũng bên cạnh Việt Nam cùng giải quyết một vấn đề sức khỏe cho người dân và người dân Việt Nam cũng thấy cảm thấy rất là tin tưởng và tổ chức quốc tế ngoài ra có một số tổ chức NGO nữa cũng rất quan tâm rất quan tâm và nhất là những người dân mà cái vùng sâu vùng xa vùng khó cái tiếp cận với dịch vụ tế thì đều được các tổ chức quốc tế hết sức quan tâm Okay. Um, so um, uh, in Vietnam, we have uh, different kinds of uh, international organization, and um, uh, I can say that uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, has a very important uh, position in Vietnam in, in uh, the health um, situation in Vietnam. And uh, in Vietnam, we also have uh, the one UN. Um, this um, different uh, UN agencies in Vietnam uh, group in one uh, organization we call one UN, including UNFPA, UNDP for example. And then uh, they work very effectively uh, to assist us to solve uh, Vietnamese health problem. Uh, for example, uh, in some um, uh, epidemic, um, like um, the SARS uh, epidemic, uh, then uh, WHO together with uh, Vietnamese uh, um, Ministry of Health and the Health System to um, solve the problem very uh, quickly and effectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, other countries also help us uh, to collaborate and to help to improve the uh, <coughs> Vietnamese people. And uh, even now we also have some uh, small international NGOs uh, working with us, uh, especially to help people living in the mountainous area on different specific uh, issues, health issues, and uh, especially for Access to the healthcare. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 
À, và hôm nay thì cũng rất là cảm ơn các bạn Mỹ à, trong đó có một cái quỹ rất quan trọng đó là quỹ Pinkerton muốn giúp cho Việt Nam giải quyết vấn đề về HPS thành công và bây giờ rất là tiến triển rất là tốt rất là cảm ơn các bạn quan tâm của tôi quỹ Pinkerton quỹ Pinkerton and uh, we uh, can say that we are very uh, thanks to the uh, US um, friends, uh, we call friends. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, Bill Clinton um, funds uh, foundation uh, to help us uh, to solve the problem with the HIV AIDS, uh, so that uh, we can have fun because this uh, request uh, require a lot of fun to solve the HIV AIDS. Uh, yes, I have a question for your university rector. <laughs> um, so we've, we've heard a lot about the growing burden of NCDs in the country. And I'm, I'm curious, as the, as the leader of the university, how have you been able to um, motivate changes in the curriculum or in the research activity of the university to help address the, the growing concerns about NCDs? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for your questions. Uh, mm. As a University of Public Health, so we, um, we recognize the prevalence of the NCD uh, in terms of uh, burden of disease. So we already mm. have uh, uh, made a lot of research um, on uh, global, mm. on uh, estimating burden of disease including NCD. I think the report already published in Lancet three years ago. It's a data from Vietnam. And we work with the University of uh, Queensland University of, uh, in, uh, in Australia, UK. And um, we uh, provided mm. the, the burden of this with NCD. Mm. I think that the also post some data mm. from this. Data. And in our university, we form the research group, we call it yeah. NCD research group. Yeah. And I think Dr. Ming is one of the leaders of research group. So mm -hmm. Dr. Ming and uh, his research group doing a lot of uh, NCD research. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as uh, Dr. Ming is specialized in um, health economics, so uh, major part of the NCD, the NCD research in our university doing on costing of NCD disease. So we have done uh, several costing for cancer uh, and uh, some costing um, uh, for tobacco, mm. right? And uh, prevalence mm. and um, at the so research mainly on this one. We, we have and um, as a community level, we also doing some research uh, to, uh, on um, and uh, on. Um, Diabetes and hypertension at the community level. In Vietnam, we have Chile Map with the demographic health surveillance side, and uh, we do the NCD um, as this uh, start, uh, at the side. And we also have done um, some intervention for NCD. We are using the step uh, study, step one, uh, step study, the design by the show. So mm. we, we do the interventions. Uh, following the result from step. Um, but um, in terms of the education program, we have not created the independent uh, courses on NCT, but there are several lessons uh, on, uh, on NCT on the cover and the several other models like epidemiology um, and, uh, and other courses on uh, disease prevention. So, Thank you. We work very much uh, closely uh, with the Ministry of Health and uh, we very much on uh, tobacco <coughs> control. Um, we, uh, I think, um, we provide uh, evidence for, um, for law on uh, tobacco control and um, we, our university design the, the harmful uh, picture in the health uh, warning yeah, yeah, message in the tobacco um, and now our university our university has a research group uh, monitor the implementation of law on uh, tobacco control in terms of advertisement because there are people still uh, in the uh, 
uh, shop in the uh, shop in the shop. They are selling tobacco, a mm -hmm. cigarette. They st still violate the law on tobacco control. So mm -hmm. our university monitor the implementation uh, mm -hmm. to see whether the, uh, they are violate the law. No, no, that thing we we do. Um, traffic in a uh, traffic accident. We also working uh, a lot on traffic accident to prevent the traffic accidents. We uh, provide the, the um, evidence uh, to uh, for Ministry of Health to develop strategy on traf uh, prevention of traffic accidents. Mm -hmm. And now we also working with Ministry of Health to provide the uh, evidence for alcohol mm -hmm. prevention yeah. law. And the law is expected to pass next year, two thousand eighteen. So with uh, very much uh, active involvement from our industry. Yeah, actually we paid a lot of uh, attention on NCD project. And uh, I should say 70% uh, of our own money from university we spend on research uh, project on NCD. Yeah. Especially the uh, capacity of healthcare system in uh, solving uh, NCD problem. Nowadays we are uh, working on some uh, project on management of diabetes and apply different strategy including M health and uh, sending SMS <coughs> to remind people and taking medicine, taking exercise and so on. So we spend a lot of efforts on NCD project. When come you are come to uh, research <laughs> with uh, <laughs> some researcher now. Yeah, I, I think Mike has to come and work yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah, I think we, we have one more question. One more question. Yeah, one more question from you. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. From the back. Ah, uh, yes. We have final question to you. Ah, yeah. Cảm ơn bác. Cảm ơn mọi người. Trong sự thật là mất tiền ăn. <laughs> uh, so I, I used to work in Vietnam for about four or five years mm -hmm. um, in Hue City. Um, and I worked with uh, mostly orphan children. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my work was around was around mental health. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I'm here, I'm with uh, DGHI working mm -hmm. mostly on global mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wondered uh, okay. if you could speak more about okay. uh, just if you've looked at mental health disparities in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And for what groups or what areas you think need more attention, mm -hmm. and how, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. can folks yeah, help. okay. I I think uh, mental health is also a big problem in Vietnam, but we don't have any national survey on mental health at the moment, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and also because of we have many uh, tools for measuring mental health, so that we haven't uh, decided which one we use, and. So that we don't have any uh, official figure at national level on mental health. And uh, I believe in the future that is uh, also a very uh, promising area to work together. Yeah. At our university, we uh, also had some uh, different group conducting uh, mental health uh, research. For example, uh, for the, in a, a small scale uh, research, like a, uh, mm -hmm at the high school or mm -hmm. primary school or mental health workers yeah, working in some area like a health workers. Yeah. yeah that's very important uh, yeah. area we, we should invest more on that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I think this has been a, a yeah. fascinating hour. We've all learned a great deal about public health issues and challenges in Vietnam. So mm -hmm. please join me in thanking our guests. Thank you.